QuickBooks Online 2024 Payroll and Employee Reports. Get ready and some coffee because we don't accept excuses about being too tired. Unless for some reason someone made you physically carry two tires, then maybe it's a legitimate excuse because you've been too tired against your will. But anyway, let's get into it. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our crunchy numbers is my cardio product line. Now, I'm not saying that subscribing to this channel, crunching numbers with us, will make you thin, fit, and healthy or anything. However, it does seem like it worked for her. Just saying. So, you know, subscribe, hit the bell thing, and buy some merchandise. So you can make the world a better place by sharing your accounting instruction exercise routine. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Here we are online in our browser, searching for QuickBooks Online Test Drive, looking for the result that has Intuit.com in the URL, Intuit being the owner of QuickBooks, selecting the United States version of the software and verifying that we're not a robot. Opening up the major financial statement reports like we do every time. The reports, they're on the left-hand side. We're going to be right-clicking on one of the favorites, that being the balance sheet open link in new tab. Right-clicking on the profit and loss. Once again, opening the link in a new tab. Let's go to that middle tab. We opened, close up the hamburger, do the range change, bring it back to 2023. 010123 tab, 123123 tab. Running it to refreshing it. And then we'll tab to the right, same process, hamburger. Close that hamburger so we can eat it. 010123 tab, 123123 tab, and run that report. That's the setup process we do every time. We're going to go back to the first tab. That's where we would be doing the data input, checking what happens to the financial statement reports, balance sheet income statement on the tabs to the right. We now want to think about the payroll process. So if I select the drop down here, we talked about the overall accounting cycle. There is a cycle once set up that's going to be kind of cyclical in which we'll have repeated processes on a monthly and yearly basis. And then we have cycles within cycles where we have the customer cycle, which you might call the revenue cycle, the income cycle or sales cycle and the forms related to it, the vendor cycle which you could call the expense cycle, the accounts payable cycle, the purchases cycle, forms related to it. And now we're looking at the employee cycle. Now this one we saved towards the end here because one, there's a lot of different ways you can approach the payroll cycle. Two, it's kind of similar to the vendor cycle, but has more complexities to it due to regulations, including withholdings that will differ from place to place. And, and three, you know, you could, you could do the payroll internally or you can choose to do it externally. It's kind of an add-on type of feature which generally will cost more uh, to be picking up. So we'll go through this, the typical cycle of the payroll cycle and then some options on how you might uh, approach the payroll cycle. First noting, however, that the payroll cycle, again, would be part of like the vendor cycle in essence if you were able to just hire somebody and then say, I'm just going to pay you for, for the work that we agreed upon. We'll shake hands. I'm just going to pay you at the end of the week according to our agreement. And then it would be very, very easy. We could use an expense form just like every other vendor type of situation and basically just record payroll expense and decrease the checking account when the payment happens. But it's not that easy because of regulations, including from an accounting standpoint, one of the most uh, big changes being the payroll withholdings that are going to take place in which we have both mandatory withholdings and possibly voluntary withholdings and then the reporting requirements that are going to go along with those uh, payroll withholdings. Also note 
that because this is related to laws, regulations, and taxes, taxes being according to certain laws and regulations, it will be different depending on location. So we're going to be talking from the perspective of the United States payroll situation because we have withholdings on the federal level of the United States. But even within the United States, you've got different payroll from a state to state level. So you have some uniformity within the United States on the federal level. And then you have differences from state to state, which are going to decide how they want to pay for their taxes for particular locations uh, within the state. If you're outside of the United States, then you could have a completely different tax structure. Possibly you don't have like an income tax, which is kind of tied into the payroll tax as much as your primary taxation, as much as a usage tax or something like that, which means, you know, your tax implications will be more on the sales kind of thing, similar to the sales tax that we have here on the state level. And you might not have this whole issue as much with the withholdings on the employee uh, side of things. So that's the general uh, idea. Now, there's two major ways that you can deal with the payroll. You can either set up payroll internally and pay extra typically to do that, or you can go to a third-party payroll provider and have them handle the payroll externally and then try to just integrate the transactions into your system so your financial statements are correct, but they're handling all the other stuff related to the payroll and possibly to human resource issues as well. Human resources being kind of linked to payroll. When I'm thinking of payroll, I'm thinking about the technical impact on the financial statements, but there are also laws and regulations just on the human resources side of things that we want to be in compliance with as well uh, with regards to uh, employees remembering that w when it comes to lawsuits and problems like that, the employees are the highest risk typically. So you want to make sure that your payroll is set up properly, that you're following all the laws and regulations related to it, and run it just as smoothly as you can. Now, the third option you might be thinking is, well, why don't I just run payroll and then I'll just calculate the payroll manually? You could do that, but I don't suggest doing that even if you only have a few employees, given the fact that, again, payroll has become quite complex. Some people will argue that that's not the case because every one particular payroll item is not that complex. It's not hard to calculate the Social Security in and of itself or the Medicare in and of itself for one payroll for one employee or the federal unemployment tax for one payroll for one employee. But when you combine them together for multiple employees, even if there's only a couple of employees, and you have to do it on a paycheck by paycheck period, and you have to be reporting on a payroll by payroll setting as well as a year to date setting. And you have to be able to summarize that information for the 941s, quarterly reporting 940 at the end of the year, W2s, W3s, and be in compliance with that reporting as well as any state reporting that happens on top of that. That starts to get complex, not because any individual component is complex, but because there's so much that's being combined together uh, that you have to, that it starts to add up on itself. So I think the viable options that you have are the payroll internally. So just a quick reminder, it's usually an add-on feature, which you will see when you purchase payroll, but you can also just set it up uh, once, even if you have your QuickBooks set up and you don't have payroll and you want to turn it on, you could pay more for the payroll, right? So if you go into QuickBooks here, uh, I'm, I'm on Intuit.com, by the way. This is the Intuit website, I-N-T-U-I-T.com. And then I'm going to go into QuickBooks. And then down at the bottom, I go all the way down to our products here. And then I usually like to look at the QuickBooks online payroll. And then you can look at the plans and pricing uh, for the payroll here. So here's your plans and pricing. If you just purchase QuickBooks, then it's usually going to be asking you as an add-on feature uh, once you go through the purchasing process if you want to be adding on the payroll. So there's that. If you're within QuickBooks, then you could go down to the payroll here. And if payroll had not yet been turned on, then you, you'll have the option basically to be turning on the payroll. You can also manage your account if you need to make adjustments to it in the cog here and in the settings within uh, your company area, the account and settings area. Now, if you wanted to do payroll externally, then you can find a payroll provider. The big couple are ADP 
and paychecks that you can you can look at. I'm not promoting them. I'm not affiliated with them at all. They're just some of the larger companies, which then you can try to have them responsible for actually issuing the payroll checks and doing all of the uh, work along with the, the, the payroll checks. And then your responsibility is to try to integrate the reports that they have for payroll into your system so that you don't need to have all the detail involved. You don't need to process the payroll forms or have all the detail per check, but you need to get your financial statements correct uh, so that you can report properly for at least income taxes in the United States and possibly for other external reporting purposes. Now, let's just go over a quick review of the process or the cycle of payroll. So if I go, I'm going into a flow chart. This is a desktop flow chart, but we're just looking at it for the cycle of the forms that will be in play for payroll. So the first one here in our cycle is to enter the time. So note, well, the first thing that you would do with payroll is of course, one, set up the payroll. That's going to be a setup process. We'll talk a little bit about that more in the portion of the, the a section or course where we start a new company file that is similar to the setup or startup process that you would have when you set up a new like QuickBooks file and you need to set up the chart of accounts and you need to set up the items with payroll. You need to set up the original kind of payroll settings within the system. And when you set up the original payroll system, you're going to be deciding wh which pay periods do you want to be setting up? Are you going to be setting, are you going to pay people weekly, bi-weekly, semi-monthly, or monthly? Those are the usual payroll setups. And are you going to be paying people as your employees on an hourly basis or possibly on a salary basis? Those are some of the basic, you know, setup tools that you'll need to put in place when you add your employees and set up uh, your payroll. If you're paying people hourly, then you're going to have to enter time into the system when you pay them. So if you pay them weekly and they work 40 hours a week, then you're going to have to put in the 40 hours. You're going to have to get that information somehow. How are you going to get that? Well, you could get it from timesheets. The timesheets could be done internally. So you could, there's different options with QuickBooks Online. We talk more about them in detail in a, in a future course or section. If you want to look into payroll more specifically, because it is a, kind of a place in and of itself. But uh, this time entry isn't required for payroll because you could get your payroll information from an outside source like another software or even Excel. Just let them give you their time on a weekly uh, basis or a monthly basis or whenever you pay them. And then you can just enter that as you process the payroll. This time entry is often for people that use a job cost system like a law firm, bookkeeping firm, contractors who not only want to use it to process payroll, but also want to use it as a billing option so they can create invoices based on a billing rate for the employees. So this one may or may not be something you're doing. If you don't have hourly uh, employees and you pay them salary, then you don't really need the time entry for the employee payroll you would need it still, however, possibly, because this would possibly be the case in a law firm or, or a CPA firm to help to generate the invoices. So then we would go to the pay employees. This is going to be the thing that you're going to set up to process the actual payroll, process their actual checks or electronic transfers, which will typically happen depending on you. It's up to the business on a weekly basis, semi-weekly basis, uh, uh, every other every other week or bi-weekly, or you can do it monthly. Those are the typical cycles that you would have. Whenever those cycles are, you're going to process the payroll, which will actually generate a check. The check will be a payroll type check, but it's still just a check. It's decreasing the checking account, but it'll have a specific name in the transaction report that it's a payroll check if you're processing it through uh, through the payroll system. And when you enter the check, then you're going to, you're going to, you're going to, you're going to record the payroll expense. You're going to record the decrease to the checking account, but you're actually going to withhold some of their money. There's going to be a difference between what you recorded as a payroll expense and the money they actually get. As you know, if you've looked at your check stub and the difference has to be reported to the employees on a pay stub that they receive in some way, shape or form, even if electronically filing, which will tell the employee that you took out at least generally 
the federal income tax that they owe the Social Security and the Medicare, and then there might be voluntary withholdings and there might be state tax withholdings. So that means there's going to be a, a liability created here because you took money from them because you're forced to by the government and they never got their full paycheck. They only got part of their paycheck because the government is requiring you to act as the tax collector on their behalf. And then, of course, you have to pay the, the liabilities that you withheld from them, as well as your own payroll tax liabilities to the government for federal income tax, Social Security, Medicare, any kind of benefits, 401k plan, insurance, any state taxes. On top of that, you also have to deal with the processing of payroll tax forms. The payroll tax forms are the forms 940 typically for quarterly filing. I'm sorry, 941 for quarterly filing, 940 at the end of the year, and then the W-2s and the W-3s at the end of the year. Now, the, the 941s are kind of like for individual income tax uh, reporting, the form 1040 in that you're supposed to pay your taxes during the year, like we do with individual income taxes. And in a perfect system, the form 1040, there wouldn't be any amount due or an amount of a refund if it wasn't such a complicated system. It would just be an informational return. Because the income tax is so complicated, we shoot for a refund so that we don't get hit with penalties from underpaying. That's why there's a refund involved. But with payroll taxes, we should be able to get it exact, meaning we already paid our taxes when we processed the payroll. We should be able to make that exact. Therefore, when we file the 941s on a quarterly basis, it's just going to be an informational return telling the IRS, this is how much I owe in summary. This is how much we paid. It should tie out. The 940 at the end of the year isn't a yearly summary of the 941s, but rather it's focused on a different tax. It's focused on the federal income tax rather than the other 941s focused on Social Security, Medicare, and uh, federal income tax. I mean, the 940 is on the federal unemployment tax. I'm sorry, the 940 is on the net federal unemployment tax. And then the W-2s, of course, are gonna have to go out per employee. The W-3 is kind of like one giant form that encompasses all the w 2 So that's the general process. Let's look at the forms here a little bit more in depth. So these are the forms that you would file quarterly. These I just looked up at the irs.gov, irs.gov, and you can look up the 941s where you see you need the employer identification, the name, the address, and then you've got box one, number of employees, two, wage tips and others. So this is going to be compiling all of the uh, income for one of the quarters. You're going to do this on a quarterly basis up top. And then you've got the federal income tax withheld. And then you got if no wages and tips and so on. And then you've got your tax calculations, taxable social security wages, social security, uh, Medicare, and the federal income tax. So that's how much tax that, that uh, you're going to owe when you add those up. Tax due on, un, on unreported tips. Well, here's the total Social Security and Medicare taxes. Here's the total taxes before adjustments. Then you can make an adjustment and here's the, the adjusted tax. And then you're going to have your tax payment that will be in there. And hopefully when you compare the tax payment and the amount due, it should come out to zero, right? It's the general idea. It's an informational reporting form, hopefully, if everything goes properly. The 940, as you can see, is the employer's annual federal unemployment, that's FUTA, tax uh, return. So then this is, so this is focused on another type of tax. This tax is usually going to be a smaller tax in total than the other three, Social Security, Medicare, and federal income tax. That's why they only require it to be reported uh, in terms of one time a year instead of on a quarterly basis is the general idea. And then you've got the W-3. The W-3 looks pretty much like the, the W-2 forms. So this is basically a summary of the W-2 forms, which is an indication that you can kind of see all of the payments that you make to all of your employees as if they were one employee, as if they were one big journal entry. 
And that's kind of what the W3 is. It's summing all of your employees up as if like they're one lump, lump sum composite person <laughs> that you're paying on one, like a one-time payment, right? Then you can, that's kind of what the W3 basically uh, looks like. So then when you actually process the payroll, let's go back into our reports here. We, we would be in the payroll center. Now this, this file uh, doesn't have payroll completely set up for us to kind of practice with. Payroll is particularly difficult to run practice scenarios with because the way payroll works is real time. So the system's gonna be working in real time. So, and it's hard to work a practice problem where you want time to pass. I would like to work a whole, a whole quarter at least, or possibly a whole year's worth of payroll for a good practice problem course. Why? Because every quarter is different. Quarter one payroll taxes will be different in part because everybody's gonna hit the cap for the FUTA tax, the Federal Unemployment Tax Act tax. So quarter one will look a lot different actually then quarter two in some of the types of taxes you pay in quarter three and then quarter four is when you have to then file all the all the tax returns in, including the 941s to 940 and you could end up with other caps that have problems with it like additional tax for medicare and possibly a tax cap for social security as well so it's difficult to run practice problems using software we have courses where we've done our best uh, to look at that but it's a specialty area uh, in and of itself. So we're just going to give a recap here when we get into the section or course where we start a new company file, we'll do a little bit of practicing running a couple payrolls uh, to get an idea if we can get access to uh, the payroll, but we're not doing a whole course specifically on payroll, which again could be a whole course easily multiple courses basically uh, in and of itself. But if you process the payroll within the system here, then QuickBooks has some certainty to kind of help you through with recording all the transactions properly and then providing what's needed to the employees, which is a pay stub, which gives you the amount of withholdings per check and on a year to date uh, basis. Although if I go to the tab to the right, it's gonna be a lot more cumbersome, right? So if I run payroll through the checking account, and I have even five employees, that means it's gonna have five five paychecks per, uh, per th um, whatever I'm, my payroll running is per week, bi-weekly or so on, which gets to be a lot more transactions. Not only that, it's gonna split those transactions up according to the withholdings. So the accounts affected will be the checking account and then we'll probably have, pay we will have some kind of payroll tax liability accounts that will be affected for Social Security, Medicare, and uh, federal income tax and possibly voluntary withholdings. And then we'll have the income statement accounts, which will be a, a payroll tax expense, as well as just a payroll expense. Those are the minimum amount of, of accounts that will be happening. Also means that if you run payroll within QuickBooks, you can't basically be on a cash-based system with payroll. In other words, I can't just wait till something clears the bank and then use my payroll, my checking account here uh, and wait till it clears the bank and just record it as payroll expense when it goes through my bank account. Be why? Because if I'm running full service payroll, I have to do the withholdings when I process the paycheck. Now, if you have someone else doing the payroll, like an ADP or a paychex, then you might still be able to do basically like a cash-based system and possibly rely on an accountant or CPA tax preparer at the end of the year to basically shore things up with your with your people you're working with. In that case, you would wanna be working with a, a good payroll provider and then a good bookkeeper that's doing the bookkeeping possibly more on a cash basis uh, system and then a good tax preparer or CPA firm which can can take the bookkeeping information and the payroll information to properly make any adjustments necessary on a periodic basis possibly just at the end of the year so they can properly at least do the tax return and or and or uh, the the external reporting let's get a quick look at what the payroll kind of looks like here 
So this is a really basic register for payroll. They're gonna be a lot more complex than this, but just to get a general idea of it, if we had two employees, then we're gonna say we have Adam and Erica. So here's like a payroll register. Let's say Adam made, it, we're going to say that he makes 55000 a year divided by 12. That would come out to 4583 a month if we paid them monthly. The Social Security withholding, the amount that we're going to take from Adam, is going to be 6.2% generally. So that's how much we would have to withhold. Why? Because the government makes us. Medicare, we're going to take 0.1.45% or 0.0145, right? That's going to be how much Medicare we take out of his paycheck. I'm not going to get into uh, food to tax right now or, or or state withholdings or because those will be dependent on the state because FUTA is fairly small and will be dependent on which quarter we're talking about because there's a cap and it'll phase out. And uh, I'm not going to get into the voluntary withholdings like 401k plans and whatnot, but all of that stuff could be included and add a lot of complication to the payroll. But this is just the general idea. Those are the withholdings. So the income uh, income tax is 710. That's how much federal income tax. Notice I can't just multiply that times the, the earnings because it'll be dependent on tables. This is the biggest one that we're paying for to get help with. And I just made that number up. It's probably not a good, uh, the most best uh, accurate of a, of a number to guess, but it will be dependent upon the information on the W-4, which, which will give us the information on how many dependents they have and all that kind of stuff to let us know how much we should deduct. So, so that one isn't just a flat tax. These are basically flat taxes. They're pretty easy to calculate, I, although they're not exactly flat taxes because... Uh, because we have a cap on Social Security and because the Medicare, there's an added tax possibly at some point. So it's getting, even that's getting complicated. But this one has a table that we have to deal with. And so that one gets even messier. But then the net pay is going to be the earnings minus the withholdings. So this is the amount that this one individual, Adam, would be receiving in an electronic transfer or an actual physical check. And then we would have to provide Adam with a pay stub that would have this information in it, telling him this is what you earned, this is what we took from you because we were required to do so, and this is how much we paid you. This amount is not ours, even though we didn't give it to you, Adam. We have to pay it on your behalf to the government because they think you're a baby and you can't do it yourself and they're making us do it for you. And it's kind of embarrassing for everyone involved, but that's how it works. And then, we also have to pay our social security tax on top of that and the medicare this is our this is actually the payroll tax that we're paying over and above we're not taking out out of the employee's paycheck it's kind of like a matching situation for a retirement plan although the social security system is not set up like a retirement plan because a responsible retirement plan would typically have the money in it that's re that's getting interest on it and whatnot and that's not what happens in the federal government they're spending everything that they get there's not any it's not like it's not like it's going into a fund for our retirement no they want you to have they want to you know the future generation is going to be paying for our social security right i don't think they are they'll probably they probably rebel by that time and so they're going to leave us when we're old and we're when we're old they're going to leave us out to out to dry most likely but whatever Anyways, I'm being pessimistic. I don't know. Here's the Erica's. Erica's here. Same thing. So we she made 800. We took 6.2 percent. We took 4.1.45 percent, and then we've got the 110 came out of federal income tax. This is the amount that uh, Erica is going to get. This is the amount she earned. We have to give her that information on a pay stub as well as the year to date information, not just this information but also the combination of all paychecks up to this point and then this is the amount we owe on top of that now if you were to if you were to <clears throat> to have a, a do this internally if you did this internally in your system the system's going to provide you with every paycheck and it's going to give you this these pay stubs and it's going to have to track all this detail on a on a paycheck by check basis and a year to date basis. And if you looked at the reports, then 
within QuickBooks, you would end up, you would have a lot more uh, reports that are related to payroll. So if I go down here, employee, you've got the employee contact, uh, recent edit, time activities, and then down here, you've got the employee contact. So there's not a whole lot of payroll reports right now because it's not fully functioning in our test drive. But, but if you have payroll fully running, then you would end up with a bunch of payroll reports that are going to give you all of this information, which is going to support and give the backup detail, which will allow you to populate or support in the case of an audit, the information that's being used to populate the forms 941, 940, W-2s and W-3s, which are the reporting forms that we have to give to the IRS to let them know that we're paying the proper amount of the payroll tax. Now, if you had a third party doing this, like an ADP or a Paychex, then they would do all that kind of stuff. And your books internally might actually be a lot cleaner, right? Because what you could do then is say, well, I'm going to let them do all this detailed work with the register and all that kind of stuff. They give me reports or possibly we can integrate into payroll their system. And then I just need to record a journal entry in essence which I can record on a paycheck by paycheck period basis, or I can record uh, on a cashed basis and then based, make a year end adjustment. So for example, uh, this, this first Adams payroll looks like this. It, if, I was to int, if I was to take this register from like an ADP or a paychex who processed the payroll, the only thing that affects my account is the net check, which I'll see coming through my bank account in the bank feeds, right? So, so I could think of it as a journal entry where I have the payroll expense here, debit, and then the payroll liability is the sum of these, that's gonna be the credit, and then the checking account is gonna be this amount, this is the impact on the checking account, that's the check. So I could enter, you know, basically that check that comes through the payroll system by doing this journal entry in essence. And in, that, in doing that, I don't need all this other detail to tell me, the year to date basis versus da, 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 da. like I don't need all that because ADP is doing that. And then I can do the same for Erica. Erica's earnings were that debit the expenses. This is how much liability we took out. Boom. We credit that amount. And then we've got the checking account. There's the check that came out that I'm going to see come through the bank statement. Now that's nice. We can also try to do it with one journal entry. I can, if I had a bunch of employees and I wanted to make this as easy as possible, and I had a third party person doing the payroll, I could take their register and just take all of it and act like it's one employee. So then if I sum these two up, it comes out to this number, 538333. I could say that's the total earnings, that's the payroll expense, the liability is the sum of these, that's gonna be then the liability, and then the checking account went down by 4,141.51. Now, the problem with this method is that what's going to actually clear my bank account are two checks. These two checks. Those two checks should add up to that total amount. So, if I know that's the case, then I could use I can use that method as well, possibly. But I have to make sure I can reconcile my bank account. To do that, you might want a second payroll account. You might want a second payroll account just to process the payroll so that you can focus just on the payroll in that checking account and making sure that the amount that comes out of your payroll from the ADP calculation is the same as your journal entry, which should tie out to the balance that's going in and out of the payroll account would be the general idea. And then we also have to pay our payroll tax here, which I can could once again sum up. So our payroll liability would be the total of all of the expenses here for the both employees, and then we would record the liability. Now, one other method you could use, again, if you were a bookkeeper and you wanted to be on a cash-based system, and then you're saying, I'm gonna work with an ADP or some kind of third-party payroll provider and a good CPA that understands what we're doing and can do adjusting journal entries for tax preparation, you might try to set up a system to say, I'm gonna have the third-party provider process the payroll and then it'll come out of my checking account when it comes out of my checking account i'm just going to record the net check to payroll expense or something like that meaning i'm not going to record the detail of the liability here 
and the payroll expense. I'm just going to see the net check decrease the checking account. The other side's going to go to payroll expense, right? And so, and so, and then, and I'm not even going to record the liability part for our payroll taxes. I'm going to wait till we actually pay it because at a later point in time, we're going to pay off these liability payments, which will be hopefully processed with the help of our third party payroll provider. They will then flow through the bank feeds. And when they flow through the bank feeds, I will once again, just see the decrease from, from the payroll accounts and I'll just record it as a payroll expense, decrease in the checking account, recording the payroll expense. So the timing will be a little bit off from an accrual standpoint, because I'll be recording the payments when they clear the bank on a cash based system, as opposed to when we processed the payroll. But that's just a timing difference. And we'll have a problem with the fact that everything's going to be processed through payroll expense when we might want to in practice break out payroll expense and payroll tax liability or payroll taxes expense. So that means that at the end of the year, we inform our CPA or our accountant or tax preparer that we have a third party payroll provider. We let them process the payroll. We did it on a cash based system, just recording everything to the expense account on a cash based system. We would like you, Mr. CPA or tax preparer, to do the adjusting entry, take the, the forms, the 941s, the 940, the W3, the W2s, and do whatever journal entry you need to do to shore up the timing difference at the end of the year and break out payroll between payroll taxes and payroll expense with a journal entry on a periodic basis so that you can make it correct as of 1231 so that you can then file the taxes or and or do any external reporting. So that's a method that you can use, but that method only works if you have a group of people that know what is going on, right? Meaning a bookkeeper that knows how to do the cash based system properly, and then a payroll provider that you can depend on to integrate in, in the system and process the payroll that that can do that reliably that you want to be very careful with because they're dealing with your employees and you don't like to switch payroll providers because it's painful and you have a CPA uh, that understands how to do adjusting journal entries with relation to payroll so that you can do that periodic adjustment uh, and, and then do what you need to do at the end of the year for tax preparation and external reporting.